We trust the facts. We worship the experts. We pretend we know everything. But one man refused to lie to himself. He dared to ask, what if everything we know is just the beginning? Knowing what the meaning of the universe is and so on, then I think you could easily become the solution and then look for some mystic answer to these problems. Before he unraveled the mysteries of quantum electrodynamics, before the Nobel Prize, the Challenger explosion, or even the Manhattan Project, he was just a boy with a screwdriver and a question. Why? He was born in 1918 in Queens, New York, a Jewish kid from a working class neighborhood. His father, Melville, had no college degree, but he had stories, wild ones about the nature of atoms and the fabric of reality. His father taught him how to think, not what to think. You can know the name of a bird in all the languages of the world, he'd say, but when you're done, you'll know absolutely nothing about the bird. By the time most kids were thinking about high school dances, Richard Feynman was solving differential equations for fun. And fixing radios by what he called a kind of thinking. He hated memorization. If he couldn't explain a concept from scratch, it wasn't real knowledge. He wanted to feel the math, not just use it. Princeton, surrounded by titans of physics, Feynman didn't shrink, he dared. He solved problems no one else dared touch and laughed the whole way through. But just as his intellectual world was blooming, a shadow fell across it. War was coming and with it a secret project in the desert. When the world fell into chaos, science was drafted into service. In 1942, Feynman, just 24, received a classified invitation. Destination, Los Alamos. Purpose, build the most powerful weapon the world had ever seen. This was the Manhattan Project, a convergence of the greatest minds on Earth. Feynman, still a rising star, became a group leader under Robert Oppenheimer. At Los Alamos, physics wasn't pure anymore. It was practical, urgent and classified. Feynman, ever the mischief maker, found ways to bypass security. Not to betray, but to prove that secrecy alone wasn't safety. While he worked to build destruction, Feynman was watching the love of his life fade away. Arlene had tuberculosis. She lived in a sanitarium miles away behind glass. He married her anyway, knowing she was dying. On July 16, 1945, the desert lit up with man-made sunrise. Feynman, watching through a truck windshield, removed his goggles and saw it roar with his eyes. He said it was beautiful and terrifying. The war was over. The bomb had worked. 
but something in Feynman broke, not just because of Arlene's death, but because physics had become a weapon. After the war, Feynman turned away from politics and weapons. He returned to academia, to curiosity. He wasn't looking to build bombs anymore. He was searching for beauty in the laws of nature. Back from war, Feynman sought something pure again. At Caltech, he started over with quantum electrodynamics, or QED, a chaotic puzzle of particles, fields, and infinite equations. Physicists had hit a wall. Their equations blew up with infinities, numbers that made no physical sense. Even Einstein was stumped. Feynman did what no one else could. He reimagined the quantum world not with equations, but with pictures. Feynman diagrams turned invisible chaos into visual logic, a revolution in how physicists thought. In 1965, Feynman shared the Nobel Prize for QED. But the spotlight made him squirm. He hated prestige. He didn't want to be idolized. He wanted to play. Feynman wasn't just a physicist, he was a showman, a translator of the impossible. His lectures on physics became legendary, not because they were simple, but because they were alive. He learned Portuguese to lecture in Brazil, taught himself how to pick locks for fun, played bongos, cracked safes, dissected ants, he chased questions, not credentials. His legacy wasn't just in equations or lectures, but in attitude, to always ask. To never pretend to know more than you do. To fall in love with the mystery. January 28, 1986. The Challenger disaster shattered the nation. Seven lives lost in seconds. And in the aftermath, confusion, bureaucracy, silence. Until one physicist refused to look away. Appointed to the Rogers Commission, Feynman wasn't there for optics. He was there for the truth. And he found it not in memos or protocols, but in a simple O-ring. In one live demonstration, Feynman cut through layers of denial. The cold had compromised the seal. The shuttle had been launched anyway. He spoke the truth. Even when it embarrassed NASA. He demanded honesty, not just in science, but in leadership. And as always, he let the facts speak for themselves. Feynman battled cancer twice. In his final years, the body faded, but the mind never did. He was still asking questions, still playing. On February 15, 1988, the world lost one of its greatest minds. But not his curiosity, not his courage, not his voice. Feynman showed us that science isn't about answers. It's about the joy of asking, the thrill of not knowing, and the courage to say what is true, even when it isn't convenient. If this story moved you, even a little, please consider liking the video, especially our loyal subscribers who see it first. It really helps the algorithm share it with more people who might need to hear it. And if it didn't resonate with you, 
We'd still love to hear your thoughts. Honest feedback helps us improve and make better content. If you'd like to see more stories like this, you know where to find us. You can also reach out on social media. Links are on the screen and in the description. We'd love to connect. Thanks for being here. Stay thoughtful, stay curious.